Episode 153 Above Ground Podcast, Things I Can Never Have. This episode is brought to you by Nipperfest. Nippertown is bringing you some of the best music from the Capital Region and calling it Nipperfest. Nipperfest is a local music festival and it's happening on Saturday, July 23rd at the Music Haven Central Park, connected in New York. Local food, local craft beer, did I mention it's free? July 23rd it's happening, so bring down the family... Stop at the Above Ground Podcast table to say hi. P.S. This is kid and dog friendly. Disclaimer. The hosts of this podcast, Timothy Patrick and Will Foley, are by no means medical professionals. However, having lived experience with mental illness themselves, they have gained useful perspectives on common mental health issues that some of us struggle to overcome on a daily basis. By sharing their stories, they hope to create connection. By creating connection, they hope to help you find your purpose. And through purpose... We can all begin to build the foundation for positive mental health. This is Above Ground Podcast. Coming at you live with real conversations about mental health from the peer perspective. It's time for Above Ground Podcast. Now your hosts, TPP and Will Foley. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to Above Ground Podcast. To Above Ground Podcast with your host TPP and Will Foley. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the smooth, subtle sounds of Will Foley. Yeah, they're not really smooth and subtle right now. But hey, how we doing out there? How's everything going? What's up, TPP? What's, What's up, up, man? What's Another that? episode. Another episode. Back Holy in Hallam shit. Halls. When you look at your calendar, what we're almost we're almost at three years, man. Yeah. Almost. Every episode has taken us closer to three years. That's how it works. It is, right? <laughs> <laughs> but what if our thoughts took us to where we wanted to go? But our expectation got in the way. Ooh. Ooh. Things I can never have. But why can you never have them? Is it because you don't allow yourself to not have them? Is it because you deny yourself? What's your, what's the real truth of why you deny yourself your expectations? Yeah, I, you know, it depends. I think it's, like you said, it's how we think. It's ex, expect, expectations. It's uh, desire, wanting something. Yearning. Um, Yearning. The attachment. I yearn. The more expectations we create, I believe the more we will suffer. You know, if you're already, you know, if there's, if you're already in a, in a situation or a circumstance that creates you to suffer by creating or putting expectations onto it or, you know, before you even get into it and go, oh, this is how it should go and this is the way I want it to be, so it should be this way. And then when it doesn't end up that way, you know, the whole ceiling falls out. And um, Yeah, I'm going to say that's situational for some of it. Because there's, there's certain situations that people find themselves in that your expectation doesn't, is never going to equal what it's going to take to get out of those situations. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, so, I, I, I agree. So, That's but again, saying, you I can't. Like, I don't know if you can have any expectation at all. I, I don't know. I don't. I'm so fucking. My head is spinning. Um, I I wrote this down. I don't know if it like I I put it in question mark. So I don't know. Do you think that expectations are born from experience? I think that expectation can be born from experience. Um, I think expectation, just like, just like self-esteem can be created by the things that we believe, the things that we hear and the things that we're willing to accept as, yeah, so, as okay. our so, truths. Yeah. Those are experiences. So yeah, say, they're right? experience. Yeah. I guess it's experiential. Yeah. I mean, to say it's not, I guess would be, would be false because it's, it, I think you got to have an expectation just to get up in the morning. Right. I, I don't know if you have to have the expectation for it, but I think um, a better way to look at it would be is when you do wake up, you could be grateful for it. You know, and, and I think, I, I mean, personally, I don't, I don't know if, I don't know. I mean, I think 
everybody's got different views on it, but for me, I think, you know, creating some kind of a craving or expectation is just creating more suffering. Well, so as defined on the internet, and we know the interwebs are always true. Yes. <laughs> expectation, the noun, is a strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. And I think expectation is a very, very difficult thing because if you're stuck, you're stuck in an abusive relationship mm -hmm. and your expectation is just to wake up and be abused again the next day, you don't really have much expectation. And again, if your expectation is just to get up and have to go to doctor's appointments and manage your mental illness, what is that really like? Is that really setting you up to have anything else but that experience? Um, yeah, I mean, you can, I think you can learn to like, just acknowledge your expectation without, um, holding it accountable or like without judging it, I guess. Um, cause it might be good to, you know, like you said, if you have an expectation to kind of treat it with like, uh, okay, like I see it here, just, just acknowledge it. I see it, but I'm not gonna, you know, hold myself or hold the the situation which you have no control over anyways accountable to this expectation um but i think if you fight against them I mean, if you fight against anything it's going to push back equally as hard well that's what i mean obviously obviously we create our own suffering okay that's yeah. the buddhist that's it you know we create suffering and that is our greatest thing. It's, we create our own suffering. And how do you create, how do you stop creating suffering? You attach to nothing. Great in philosophy. Amazing in philosophy, okay? And yes, there are things that have certainly changed. That philosophy has changed my view on a lot of things. But unfortunately, it hasn't changed it on all things. And that expectation is is difficult to have because you don't know what the future holds right so i see where you're coming from though because we kind of we may create our own problem by having expectations i'm wondering if but then if having an expectation for some people might create the drive to do it to get it accomplished and I'm starting to, I realize that most of us aren't that way. I wonder, well, or I guess expectations maybe get lost. Desire would be different than expectation, right? So maybe d you could like look at a, at the desire part of it as, as, as like the discipline, you know, behind the discipline or the driving force. So whatever. the desire being the doing of like I want of creating the expectation I want creating to, the work I want of the expectation. to do this but I, at the same time you go oh I'm going to do this and this is going to happen because of this right then it's like uh that gets a little hairy but yes like, because what happens if that doesn't right. pan out and then you're like oh fuck right Right, because that's I think what happens to a lot of us. It happened to me. Right, it's happened to me. It's happened to it happens to everybody. It's happened think, to everybody. And uh, unfortunately, I think our culture supports it. You know what I mean? So it's like when you try to when you when you're healing and growing, some of the things that you learn and you want to incorporate in your life don't necessarily go with the societal norms. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, look. It's, I get I you know the unfortunately culture is what culture is and part of I think part of the problem I hate bringing up culture because part of the problem with that is is that those are the problems that we have the the wars that we're actually fighting now are all culture wars we're fighting the same fucking wars that we were fighting 60 70 years ago and we still did nothing about it nothing and you can blame culture for everything you can blame culture for everything. I'm not necessarily for blaming everything, it, but it's, but it's, it's like, a part of it. It's just my opinion. It's a part of it, for I, sure. I, I'm not, I don't want to downplay that, because there's certainly a part of that, because obviously we've all got these things in our hands. And, right. And even most people have these things in their hands. doesn't matter where your socioeconomic scale is. Oh, most I, people I, exactly. have them. Exactly. And it's, and it's, 
but it's un- but we've also made it that we all need them because if you don't have this then you are really not connected to anything because this is the only thing that can connect you to everything anymore yeah. and that that is something that we created and it was created based because people wanted to make money it had nothing to do with communication it was about making money everything is about making well, money well yeah so um i was listening to some um some of jay shetty who- oh yeah and um, I don't mind know. Mind Valley. I don't Is know the him? name of his pot. No, um, he was he was a I think he was a Buddhist. he was a Buddhist monk, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can't think of the name of his podcast, but um, but anyways, he he kind of I I just wrote this stuff down because I thought I f- thought it was interesting, but I felt it was I wanted to say it in this because it would it helped give a little a little bit more um, understanding. <laughs> So he says, attachment gives and accepts love conditionally, whereas detachment gives and accepts love unconditionally. He says, attachment loved a flower by picking it and taking it home to die. And detachment loves a flower by leaving it in the soil to continue to grow. One more. Detachment is not that you own nothing, but nothing should own you. Being close to everything and not letting it consume or control you. Which I really like that. It's like, it's nothing owns you, but, you know, you own nothing and nothing owns you kind of thing. Yeah. I like the give and take of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm just like I. I'm not saying anything because I'm just like no. I know those, it's a. It's a I'm lot. Letting those pinballs roll around. I felt that it would uh, kind of help um, describe a little bit of what we're trying to get at. So, I just uh, I just want to ask you this: Do you think? And if I understood you correctly in your opening, do you think having expectation creates? Our problems? I think it can, yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. So are you are you a non expectation person? Yeah, I'm I'm kind of that way, yeah. Definitely because I'm just I'm trying to figure out how is how is that not cynical? I don't know, maybe it is. But it's like it to me. I don't know if it is. I don't. I, I, I don't, don't know. know if it is. I don't know if it's cynical. It's 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 kind of um, for me. It's like you know, let's say that someone gets into a relationship, and you're going to get into the relationship expecting to be happy because you know people are happy in relationships. I mean, just turn on TV. People are happy together and then everyone's happy when they get into a relationship. So this relationship is going to make me happy. Well, what they're really experiencing is, is the endorphin rush, which is true, which right. is an actual which thing is, that dopamine happens. Is, the think, dopamine yeah. hit that happens. No, no, it is. They said it's just like doing Coke. So unfortunately though, the reality of that wears off. Right. And you're left with the dailies as I like to call them. And right, the dailies, and, but you're also left with either what you had when you went in, or maybe even less than what you went in. So if you go into something with time. with more of, uh, hey, you know what, like this relationship could be cool. Yeah, I'll find out. Let's see, whatever. But I'm good either way. Like I have my ice cream sundae right here. Like I could take the cherry. Or I could leave it. I don't really need it because I've got my nice Sunday here. I created this Sunday that I love this Sunday, and I'm going to eat this Sunday. If you want to put a cherry on top, sure. Why not? Let's try it. Right? But but I'm going to go. Some people will be like, well, this Sunday isn't complete unless you put the cherry on top. That's when you're going to run into some problems. Well, yeah, not everybody likes cherries on their Sundays. Well, that too. <laughs> that too. Not everybody likes cherries on their Sundays. Right. I don't care about cherries on my Sundays. But you know of course, that. I don't eat a Sunday, so <laughs> I still I'm still old school, man. I want a medium vanilla cone with rainbow sprinkles, motherfucker. Hey, nothing wrong want. with that either. Soft, <laughs> soft serve, soft serve. All right. Um, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I'm, now you I'm know just busting I mean. your balls. No, that's hey, old school is the way to go. 
I don't care what anyone says. I like those old school cones, man. I eat those. Yeah, me too. My son always gets the ice cream and he's like, "Take this, it's gross." I'm like, "Oh, I love it." Yeah, me too. Especially after it's been soft served. <laughs> so I was gonna say, and it's all just it's like all mushy. Like, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah See, it's ice cream. It's ice cream weather here yeah. in upstate New York. And yes, it is. As you can everything tell. is everything is starting to open. Because you know that's the thing. I have an expectation that I'll have an ice cream, but you know what the thing is is that I'm lucky. Because you know what, man? I can go get an ice cream anytime I want. There you go. Like, I, I that's mean, part of it. Yeah. Like, I, I mean it. Like, l- I literally, like, most of the time could probably go get an ice cream cone anytime I want it. Right. Not everybody has that option. No. No. And no, I just think, I guess it's in the way that you, uh, you know, the way that you approach it. Like, hey, I would like an ice cream this afternoon. Like, and you can even work towards it. But don't have that, like, if I don't get an ice cream, I'm going to be very upset. Like, I need this ice cream. Well, it's the clinging. Yeah. We cling, just like in, just like the Buddha say, we cling to what we want. We cling to our expectation. We cling to our ideas. We cling to our affiliations. We cling to our clubs. And yes. I'm going to call it out. You cling to your tribe because your tribe just keeps telling you every fucking thing you want to hear. Well, guess what? They're not telling you the right thing all the time. Right. You know, pick up a fucking book. You know, put down the fucking video games and pick up a book. Yeah. There's a lot of interesting ideas out there that might actually open up a whole other thing for you. Just saying. Yeah, you're, I just had a thought, and it just escaped me because I was, like, laughing on the inside. <laughs> Timmy's laughing on the inside. Um, He's no, smirking on the out. He's you're right, laughing on you're you. You're right with that. I, I, The whole, you know, I think we attach to to the, the thing, and then sometimes, which, you know, going back to what we just talked about, the dopamine, I think... Not even it's not even about getting that thing. It's about the the pursuit to that thing because we have this image like when I eat that Sunday. Oh man, last time I had a Sunday was just last time I had an, a vanilla cone yeah. with sprinkles on it was so good. So that's what we're. It's not even about the ice cream. It's about that thought. It's about that thought. So, I am going through that with everything right now. I've you been need, on that. I've been Buddha. on that. I've been on that path for a while, and I've been going through that with everything. Like, like for the last like few weeks, like I've been going through that with coffee. I've been going through that with beer. Like everything that I'm taking in, like is having the negative effect on me now, again. And it's like, and I don't know you, if man, I'm, you don't need this shit. I don't know if it's that. I'm just afraid. I think it's just telling you you don't need necessarily need it, you know. That's all. Maybe, uh, but it's there's things that I'm clinging to. I'm clinging. I really am. I know I'm clinging. I know what I'm clinging yeah, I mean, to. I, I'm sure we all do it in some fashion. You know what I mean? Again, it's like I don't mean to keep bringing it up, but I think this again with you know the culture. It's it's not even the, like people want that ice cream cone and then they get it. And then what they want? They want three more ice cream cones. Because one's not enough. I need more. Sometimes. And yeah. I need more now. You know what I mean? I wanted. <laughs> I want a golden goose. I want. The... <laughs> exactly. That's right. A golden goose for Easter. Was that Veruca? Yeah, it was Veruca. Of course. Damn Veruca. Veruca. Good band, though. Yeah, good band. Good band. See you there, but yeah, right. But uh, but Veruca was was I think that she had expectation that you know she felt that she could just take the goose. well because she was taught that she was taught that right. that she could have whatever she wanted because right. and they were and she was allowed to she was allowed to get away with right. it right right like and you know now so, if, but if you weren't allowed to get away with anything you have the exact opposite expectation you don't expect anything right which is going to make you even more combative sometimes it could but i feel like i feel like overall that might be a little bit better because you won't expect it but then when someone's like here like here's an ice cream cone and you're like 
You know, you may be like, whoa, 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 whoa. is this real? Like, I, I don't trust this person giving me an ice cream. Well, but you might appreciate it. You might appreciate that gesture, no? Sometimes. Or, or you may feel like, okay, what's the catch? Right. Like, what, what I mean. do I have yeah. to give up? Like, what are they asking of me? Right. Because that happens a lot. No, I get it. I get it. I, I think, isn't that like, what, co, isn't that a... I think it's a trauma Isn't that response. codependency to, um, to a degree? Might be. It's definitely some kind of a trauma response. I mean, again, with your, uh, you know, w- the, what what did I say? Like with the um, expectations are born from experience. So it kind of, kind of proves that. Sure. You know, right. because if you were brought up in every experience and did that, there you go. You know, but, and if you were in it, let's say if you were in a, in a shitty relationship and, you know. Every time you did something for somebody, it was out of, you know, because they wanted you to do it and they gave you something f- to do it. So, like, your worth was based on what you did for that person, right? So, the next time you get in a relationship... Or not done. Or not, right. But you know what I mean. And, and like you said, so the next time you get in a relationship, someone's like, hey, can you do me a favor? And you're like... Uh, and you start hesitant and you're like feeling something in your stomach yeah, and you're yeah. like, danger, danger, danger. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you start noodle bobbing. Right. So, yeah, that's why it's trauma. Not knowing your size. Yeah. Dude, there's so many things, you know. The trauma, but, not knowing yourself. But yeah. what if you know yourself and you still can't fucking figure it out? Probably there's going to be yeah you're not going to be able to figure it. and that's when that's when I think detachment can come in and you just let go and almost I guess surrender to hey you know what <laughs> dude nobody wants to fucking surrender I know nobody but, wants to give it up well like nobody just, wants to give up I've learned to I've learned to do it at uh, especially with work I'm just like well that's how it is that's how it is like because let's face it I can. I can stomp my feet and scream all day. It ain't going to change. No, nah, it's just going to make your day shitty. Right. Your apps, there you go. And that's what it's, right. you pinpointed I get it. it perfectly. It's just going to make your day cruddy. Right. Absolutely. I so, get that. Yeah. I get that. So, and, and, you know, and sometimes, again, people might say, well, oh, you know, why are you worried about yourself? You might be this or you. It's like, well, it's like it's almost like we're taught that like worrying about yourself can be a bad thing. Well, but it's not. I mean, it, not if you're doing it in that way. Well, if you're if you're worried about yourself in a self help self preservation kind of way, it, it really depends on on the person in the situation. True. Because you can, I mean, dude, look, you can be told your whole entire life to work on yourself, okay? And and you can be spoon-fed a bunch <laughs> of shit about who you are, and you can buy into that and then find out that society doesn't really think that of you. And then what? Is, then, then that expectation, so, okay, now you're the victim. Because, again, again, he's playing into a lot of those, a lot of those things. Yeah, and I think exactly what you just said in that example, I think there's expectation in that, right? Well, but isn't there expectation in everything? I mean, shit, dude. I get in the shower. I expect the shower to to clean me. I guess, I guess not. I guess if you look for it, yeah. I just didn't. I guess but I, how do you look at something without expectation of it doing something? I, don't, I guess I, I, I guess I. F- I'm just using this as an example because you said it would like get in the shower. Like, I feel like I have control over if I'm going to be clean or not. Okay, but you may not have the choice about how hot the water is. True. And then, what? You know what I mean? Well, I'll, I'll figure it out when I get in there. If it's too hot, then I'll get out. I just won't be clean. No, oh, fuck that. It's never too hot. Well. It's always too cold. Always. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> always too cold. No matter how hot it is, it's always too cold. That's why we call him Lucifer, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, but if I gotta, if I can't, if I have to, st- if I stand under it and I don't have to move out of it. It's too cold. Fr- it's too cold. <laughs> Holy jeez. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, dude, I don't feel like it doesn't. Yeah? Yeah, it takes it really hot for me to feel it. And you like it like that, though? I mean, it's. It's just my like ever since I've to. had neck surgery and stuff. Uh, 
feeling okay. up there is just like I don't even know. Like I'll know if it's too hot because I'll I'll be like, okay, that's a little warm. And I gotta stand <laughs> out. And then I move Your back in. Feeling away. Yeah, yeah it's a little hot. It's a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, but my expectation is is that you know. I'm not expecting to get cold water. Like you'll never find me taking cold showers to build up, to build up my hatred toward myself because it's just <laughs> build up my because it's just I already hate myself enough. I don't want to have to build that. You up. You know, it's funny that you say because I was just watching a uh, Wim Hof video. He's incredible, dude. Yeah. And it, and it, uh, you know, I, I was... know people who take those ice baths and they swear by them. Yeah, and. They're fucking monsters, man. Yeah. And then I look at it and go, is that what I'm missing? And I'm like, fuck, why would I want to sit in fucking nice cold water? Well, but I get the... But I we get don't the, see the videos when they're first, you know, 10 times doing it. We see the videos of their 300th well, time. Right, so, right, you know right. what I mean? I get it. I get it. So, yeah, it's going to be tough. But, uh, you know, reading a little bit up on it, you know, regulates the nervous system and, you know, does all those nice uh, calming things. I don't know. <laughs> Calming things. Well, calming things, you know. How do you calm your expectation? I mean, is it is? Do you calm expectation by not having any? Like, is it really a? Is it really that it, of a whiplash? Could be that you can't that or, have any expectation. Either that or just acknowledge it and, like I said, don't like acknowledge the expectation. Don't judge it, and don't um, expect it to meet a certain demand. Well, Dr. Freud, please do tell. How do I do that? <laughs> That's the first time I pulled that one out. <laughs> it is. Um, how do you do that? You, you know, I, I I practice. Practice? Wow. Practice. Spoken like a true gentleman. There you go. Practice. You got to practice this shit. I mean, you do, though. It's You, you know, you got to practice all this stuff. It's You got to practice the the way we talk to ourselves, you know? You got to practice stopping your your sometimes your um, your reaction. Stop yourself and and try and, and turn it into a response. You know, one that would be kind to you and and you know the other party. You yeah, know, reaction just, and response are opposites to me. To me, they are. But no, yeah, I I I'm learning that just from hearing you say you you said just it to because me of it takes different. It takes right. different modes and different parts of your brain to react than it does to respond. And reaction is generally just something that is old. Yeah, and that well, and that's the thing, though. It's something that habitual, right? So, and 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 I'm not making excuses for anybody, but it's sometimes it's something that is is can be out of our control. You know, if it's something that continues to to occur and plague plague you, yeah, you should take a hard look at it, right? But like sometimes it's that knee jerk, you know, you're like there and that's when the practice comes in and you keep stop, you know, you stop, stop and stop and keep stopping yourself after the 300th time and might go, oh, Jesus, I caught myself and I didn't do it. That's true. And th- and that's the thing. And that's what the kind of practice it takes. Right. It does. Now, granted, luckily in this world, you have that 300 times every day, pretty much, <laughs> that you can exactly. figure this shit out. But trying to think about it while you're in the heat of it is yeah. is completely... No. Right. No, no, I agree. You, you know. can't think of it in the heat of it. No, that's... Which means, it sounds like to me, that... These types of things are, like, when people say that they're mental health warriors, like, I understand what that means. Because the fact is, is that it really does take... Oh, yeah. It really does take a fighter's mentality to keep up disciplinary practices, to keep up, you know, your ADLs. If you don't know what an ADL is... It is your daily living, the activities of daily living. And that is a term that you'll hear a lot because when people decompensate in mental illness, their ADLs, their activities of daily living decrease. You'll notice that they don't clean themselves enough. They're unshaven. They look very unkempt. They're very disheveled um, and, and those types of things. So you can gain a lot by seeing someone's apartment. You can gain a lot by seeing how they dress. Now, granted, that can be a false flag, too, because some people do 
dressed to the nines because that's something in them that says, oh, I have to go out and look a specific way. But that doesn't mean that the rest of them is put together. But that's just that. No, that's a good point. Good point. For sure. But because our daily our daily living activities are usually the things that suffer the first. Because when you get when you don't want to get out of bed, man, you don't want to shower, you don't want to brush your teeth, you don't see a point. What's the point? I think that kind of uh, what's the word perpetuates it, maybe. Like it, you know, what it I mean? does. Like, it does. Now, I'm granted. Look, I'm I'm not opposed to somebody taking a mental health day. Okay. Oh, absolutely. I think, like I yeah. think it's important, and I think it's important for people to be able to say, "I'm really having a hard time today, man." And you know what? I can't do this. Now, yes, okay, well said. there are the people who will take advantage of that. There's people that will take advantage of anything that you give them. But that doesn't mean that you don't make it because of that. Right. You, you, don't, you can't make others suffer because of you can't, right. a few. You don't make others suffer because of a few. Yeah. No, I agree. Mental health days, for sure. Um, I take them when I need them. Sometimes I... I take them a little bit later than before I need them, but <laughs> I try to be uh, proactive with them. Um, but, I was uh, very liberal with my mental health days for the last eight years. Yeah? Yeah. It's not a bad thing. I mean, if you were able it's to do not, it. It's not. I was able to do it then. Then that's good. I'm not able to do it now, but I was able to do it then. But what I, you Which know, is kind of strange, but... <laughs> No, it's the no. I get it's it. The it's gig. Just, it's yeah. the gig. No, I get it. It's the you but know. But you guys have to take care of yourselves too, you know. Yeah, but I realize though, and I realize that with expectation, like the expectation is, is that when you get into this, that is very stressed. But what most of us don't do is most of us get stuck in the cycle. Like most of us get caught up in the, you know, in the figuring out, oh, you know, you got to sign up for benefits. Oh, you got to do this. Oh, you got to do this. Oh, oh, you still got to learn the job, but you still got all these 15 other things that yeah. you got to do before you even, before you're even done. Yeah, there's a lot of tabs going off in the head. Yeah, a lot of one. tabs, man, and a lot of fucking file folders that are just fucking empty because you don't know what to put in them. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's a little bit disgruntled. <laughs> Not disgruntled <laughs> no, at all. At all. I'm I'm grateful. I'm just I'm a little bit overwhelmed, I think. You're allowed to be overwhelmed. And yeah, it's, you that know, word it's, it's, I it's but here's perfect, the thing though. It's a perfect feeling, I think, for anybody starting a new job and a new career and a new setting. You know what I mean? It's like Well it's a natural it's a natural response. It's yeah. actually a natural response. Or reaction in it. Uh, but I will say this, my my normal reaction for the last is not there. Like, it's just not my normal reaction of super, like, freaking out. Oh, I've been able to, I've been good. able to keep at, at bay a lot easier than before. But I'm, I've noticed that, you know, distraction is very easy for me to take part in because... It's just easier for me than to deal with reality sometimes, man. That's and all right. But just it's not. Get, well, just it's all right to do temporary distractions, just as long as they don't become permanent. Yeah, that's my problem, though. Yeah. We know moderation is not my strong suit, so <laughs> it doesn't matter whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. It can become a fucking easy thing to... So maybe don't make um, expectations that you're... You're not going to do this because that might create more suffering, right? Sure. See? Creating more expectations might create more suffering. <laughs> there, is. there you go. So maybe, you know, maybe we don't put any more sand in that in that pail. You know, that pail's already full, I suppose, of expectations. So <laughs> sounds about right to me. I don't know. I'm not sure. You know what I mean? It's it, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. Expectation. You, you have know? anything else to add to that? Do you? Do you, it, I, no, you know? No, I, I'm I'm good. I'm, you know, we kind of touched on it, and as as we do with everything, we just try and open up conversation. And if we can um, inspire somebody to to take 
take it the next step and and further uh you know educate themselves on these things and learn something then then so be it yeah we talk about asking better questions and a lot of our conversations between the two of us are more questions because you know what man we all got them and you can't start breaking anything down until you ask the question like well it, said. and it really it really goes to that and every time I leave these sessions, I I leave with more questions because because <laughs> they because it prompts me to think, which is all that I can ask for. You know, I mm-hmm. mean that's in reality all that all that I can expect. You know, and I and I don't have any expectations. Like I don't have any expectations. I had no expectations for this evening's sessions at all. See, that's cool, right? Yeah, like I had none because like two days ago I was like fuck. I'm like, what are we going to talk about? What are we going to do? And, <laughs> and you know, and then I get here and I get in front of the mic and I'm like, yeah, let's do it. Let's right? Just, let's just go. rip into it, man. Yeah, just rip into it. Like you would to rip into that uh, vanilla cone with sprinkles. That's right, or your Twinkies, whatever. Uh, Who, I'm not judging. <laughs> <laughs> Twinkies, I might judge a little bit. I'm not going to lie. Ah, go fuck yourself. <laughs> Actually, I don't even know if they're making Twinkies anymore. I don't know. <laughs> I, somebody, somebody, let me know if they're still making Twinkies because they're not made by Hostess anymore. So Woody Harrelson has a big stash. I'm sure he does. He's got a big stash of everything. <laughs> He's got a big stash of weed too. I bet he doesn't have a big stash of. Uh, he doesn't have a big stash though. He doesn't have a big stash. No, does he, he does not. <laughs> Ah, oh, well, on that note, it, yeah, on that note, be well, be safe, be above. Thank you for giving us a listen. New episodes every Wednesday. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, you can share, rate, review, and even subscribe so you'll never miss an episode. Other ways to support the show? Follow us on social media. Share the content. Share our episodes. You can also buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com forward slash above ground pod. For further concerns, show ideas, or just to say hi, you can email us at above ground podcast at gmail. Once again, thank you for listening and supporting mental health. Keep the conversation going and stay above.